Thanks for joining us this week, everybody. We got uh, Casey and Tyrell here with us. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Casey. I'm the founder and CEO here at Lofty and self-proclaimed connoisseur of terrible app ideas. You just... I've just proclaimed it thusly. <laughs> it's, not, it's on the record. We yeah. can't do anything about it now. It's finalized. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm glad I'm not going for that title. Uh, yeah. Taken. Uh, I'm Director of Engineering at Lofty. My name is Tyrone Dennison. And you guys know me. I'm uh, Chris Allen, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Lofty. So we're going to go through some of our favorite and our worst app ideas. These are apps, ideas we've had, other people have had, app ideas we've heard. We want to share them with you because we know you guys are excited too. So one of the first ones we came across was Tinder for Cats. How do you guys feel about Tinder for Cats? Tinder for Cats. Is that like a... <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go there. Well, it's like, That's I, I, feel. I can think of a... Like, <clears throat> normally when I think of breeding animals, because obviously... <laughs> Tinder's about breeding. Uh, Tinder for cows? Well, but I think of like dogs. Mm -hmm. Like if mm -hmm. I were a dog breeder, mm -hmm. I would want a Tinder for dogs. Because uh -huh. it's just like maybe that dog is a dog I want bred with but, my dog. But maybe but they're you don't just, breed cats. Or maybe they're just here for cats. friendship, okay? That's not what those cats are looking for. It's true. They're, they're just here to make friends. You're projecting your stuff yeah. onto the app. But here's what I'll say about well, onto the cats. I've never Tinder. Tinder for everything. For anything, I yes. should say. Here's what that usually means, though, is... Because I've seen it a bunch. Yeah, yeah. It means I like the the user experience quirk that they came up with of swiping, swiping yep. approve, or disapprove, right? Yep. Sure. So I've heard Tinder for everything, and they really should describe it a different way. Yes. Just don't know, a lot of times, people don't know uh, how to articulate that it's yes. it's about the swipe and not about the okay so not we're not about the fire inside. there's not there's not breeding taking place in this one is it Maybe like for is. adoption that's what I'm saying it could, who knows could be yes and oh yes. you're yes matching and. the humans matching with the cat yeah, yeah. Uh, no that that'd be fine right yeah like, I'm okay with that that doesn't make me uncomfortable that's what I hear I hear Tinder for and I think it's a I would like to I would like to look through a card. Of things and and categorize them, yes or no? Yeah, and so the next one we've got is Uber for dogs. Now, Uber for dogs was real. That was real. That was real, real. That was real, real. real. That yeah, walked that in real. my office and pitched me. That was not was it like before you started at Lofty. Do you remember Uber for I, dogs? I think it was like the first couple weeks I was there. Actually, it was it was or yeah. We had, we had just moved into the office <laughs> yeah. in the Mill District. I remember I was so excited to take. We had a fancy conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really excited to take a meeting in it, and the meeting I got was Uber for dogs. Yeah. <sighs> It was okay. So the here's the pitch, uh, right, if I remember it, it correctly. It. it was like, okay, you gotta get your dog to the groomer. And in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in character of the person. These, okay. are, these my the words I'm about to say do not reflect the views and opinions of Lofty or me personally. He was like, my wife's got a damn dog, and it needs to go to the groomer. And you know how it is. You're not putting that shit in your car. <laughs> no, you're not. And I was, and I was just like. I'm not following, but okay. <laughs> uh, and and ultimately, the idea was like you call a service, right? They come to your house. It's got a it's got a, a kennel or a crate or whatever in the back of it. Pick the dog up, take it to the groomer, handle it, come back, build your credit card. And I forget what he would call it, but mm. internally we started referring to that project as Uber, Uber for dogs. dogs. We did not take the project. Shocking. Yeah. Um, this I, I think these examples are really good for that conversation. Is is that people who are I don't even want to say software adjacent or business adjacent. They're like entrepreneurship adjacent. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough words to describe things. So yeah. they're just like, Tinder for cats, Uber for dogs. Like, they yeah. just don't have the words. They don't want to slow down the hustle <laughs> to find the right words or product to compare it to. We actually ask this of our customers in our discovery yeah. process now to give us an analogy like that. And it's kind of based on having heard these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. But it does like capture an essence of... What level of prestige they're looking for in the application, or things like certain um, user experience quirks like that. You know, if it's an infinite scroll, now everything's TikTok for blah blah blah. There is a animal acupuncturist by my house. Oh. <laughs> yep. And we were driving by the other day, and I was thinking out loud. Animals have like taken care of themselves for centuries, like. Yep. Dogs have been here for quite some time. They were fine. Mm. If they need it, they'll just find a porcupine. Yeah, like <laughs> they. The amount of businesses that, I see how that goes. we've all it's seen Homeward like Bound. <laughs> Chance. Chance. 
<laughs> Sassy! <laughs> I the amount of shadow. I really <laughs> thought we, we, we all did, my man. We yeah. all every, got her. We all did. Yeah. He's too old. He can't make it. I'm choosing to remember him voiced by Morgan Freeman. I don't think he was. I don't that's that's how I hear it in my head. Yeah. The amount of businesses that exist solely to get rich white people to pay someone to do something the animal can do itself is truly breathtaking to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. It's really genuinely impressive. I I just I don't I don't get it. They Spoke can't get themselves. To the uh, to the groomer though, <laughs> they can't. Which is why we we've imposed groomer for dogs. We've imposed modern yeah. problems on our pets, and we need to have modern solutions for those modern problems. It really works out. I mean, when you think about it, like it's if your clientele exclusive it, like exists exclusively of people with really expensive designer dogs and a G wagon that they won't put that dog in, you can put whatever price you want on that. That's animal. the thing, right? Right. right? You've well, even just think about a regular dog groomer, right? Like they don't have to worry about price efficiency in the market. They're only customers for people who will pay someone to cut their dog's hair. Yeah. So, so Charge whatever you want. Charge them the value, right? There's no... $1,000. Yeah. It's all imaginary. Yeah. <laughs> this person... This, I can't remember what movie it is. The, the, the guy's so toe out, out of touch with, like, normal people's incomes. But basically that problem yeah. is, like, what's a dog groomer make? What's... Well, how much does dog hair clipper cost? Like twenty five hundred bucks, you know. What's a banana like, cost, Michael? Ten dollars. <laughs> it's an <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Use that, not mine. Yes. Use What's that a banana one. cost, Michael? So this is this is a spot where I would say to bring it in and try and give value to a potential customer like that. Let's. Let's you got on your influencer pedestal, and you're not one of us. Anymore. I'm here. I'm here to put. No, 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 no. I'll. Are you kidding me? Are you, <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just brought up the breeding of cats. Let's be real. Uh, but <laughs> right out of the gate, <laughs> right out of the gate, we're straight into it. Uh, no, uh, like perhaps you should find a way to MVP that product first to confirm viability of like yes. people willing to pay. And not in the form of an app. Yeah, but not an app. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Not custom software. Mm-hmm. Custom software is not required nope. because your service is not software Get driven. a Google voice number, a Google form. It enables yep. Go software. to Sam's Club, get a kennel, throw it in the back of your G-Wagon, mm-hmm. and go, go... Put it in your, yeah. Yeah. Name, your next door group. Actually, that's actually a really, you know, that's a really straightforward way to do something like that. Call mm-hmm. some groomers, get a client list from yeah. them that might be interested. That's yeah. how you go track down some initial customers. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I, we didn't quote that app. Yeah, but it it never went anywhere, and it wasn't really that we shut it down and said, "Oh, we won't build that." That's not really the kind of thing that we built, yeah. admittedly, right? Um, but yeah, would and, not would not build Uber for dogs. And it it really does highlight a good point that product market fit is not the most important part of an MVP, but you can MVP all day long if you don't have product market fit. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, you you can pay some company a bunch. A bunch of money that they're just going to set on fire, and if you don't have product market fit, it's a waste of everybody's time. Yeah. <clears throat> Next, we've got Facebook for dead people. Also real. Also real one. I also remember real. that one too, guys. Yep. Presumably before Facebook was Facebook for dead people. Yeah. Because that is a feature. That's now. now you just you just talk about. That's that's the irony of that app is that it wasn't the quality of that idea that killed it. It was just that Facebook rolled out a feature flag. <laughs> And you got to watch for that out there in the market. Yeah. If your app is just some other app with a feature that they could roll out with their engineering resources, you know, it's not a really defensible place in the market. How many times have you heard about somebody's app in the app store and it just gets pulled randomly and they're like, what the hell? Like, I worked for six years on that. It's my side hustle. I was making a couple hundred bucks a month. And the next iOS update is just part of the weather app. Yep. Like, it's just in there. Yep. Yep. And you're like, yep. oh, that's why. Yep. That's why I got booted out of the store. I still got my dark sky. Yeah, I've got my, my cold dead hands. I've got dark sky and uh-huh. I've got flux. And I'm just like, no. Yep. I'm doing this the old fashioned way. Like when I used to have a jailbreak my phone to get my color scheme changed. How fun. So, mm. Facebook for dead people. What is there to say? Um, there was a, it was a QR code on yeah, a placard that was, you would scan to pull up that dead person's profile. Yeah, it was it was a way to like um, enshrine the obituary and the memorial long term and, and also provide some and I'm trying not to use like all these startup y terms, but really it was, you know yeah. we we weren't gamifying cemeteries, but we were adding discoverability to it. Like you weren't gonna be the mayor I mean, or grandma. There was there was like a leaderboard a, if you checked in, in enough grades. <laughs> yeah. Uh and a badging system. Yeah. Uh, but no it was uh you know that was that app did not see the light of day. Um I do think we actually quoted it though. 
There was a legitimate drive behind it. They had done some prototyping, and like there is a business model there. The hardest thing about that is um, that was an app that had the primary customer, right? Um, the buyer basically buying into a service that had long-term operational costs, but like in my opinion, very little appetite to pay for that forever. Mm -hmm. it, right? <clears throat> it was like yeah, that's you can sell this at a flat rate, but like. At some point over the next thirty years, your margins will go to zero and yeah. below. And yeah, you, you don't want to make it recurring. Like if the person paying for it is actually member, fa fa members of the family of the deceased, mm -hmm. like nobody wants that. Like right next to their Netflix bill. Yeah, uh, the grandma's the, the reminder code. that like, grandma passed away. And... Who wants to get on that drip email cam frame from an SDR? Like, yeah, yeah. Not me. Oh yeah. <laughs> don't let your subscription <laughs> expire. Yeah. <laughs> We, we're sorry to see you go. The open rate on that email not, next app, would be no. so next high. App. Not a single split. We're going to go see if we had an NDA on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Splitwise. I, I don't know whose who's mm, app this was. Or who put that I didn't in. put that on that list. I did not. Mm, no context. They didn't down. give us any additional information. All mm. right. Mm. I'm going to guess that it was an app for uh, accurately splitting the tab at a restaurant. We got a bunch of those and calculators. Yeah. Well, like, the thing is, though, is like, that's a, actually a really good example is like, it seemed there would be a market for splitting the check for figuring out what to do, but mm -hmm. we just have Facebook Pay and Venmo. Like yeah. it, it, the, we have a calculator in Venmo. Like yeah. it's done. Yeah, that one's just like well, it, it's. The, it, it, I don't even know if this is actually the app idea, but the one I speculated. That's just one that's again like indefensible in yeah. the market. There's that that'll be attacked by the point of sale systems, by on the phone themselves, by mm -hmm. just tr people who are good at math. There's just like a whole lot of different ways people can solve that. There. I'm a, you know, DoorDash. I'm a DoorDash Platinum Plus Premier member. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got a they, special they, card. They, they roll up in the escalator. Yes. They let me ride with them to the restaurant, <laughs> yeah. watch the food be made, and they drive me home. Um, but they, they, there's like uh, a champagne <laughs> yes. and oyster crackers Absolutely. in the back seat for Absolutely. you to enjoy. I've got, got, con I've got a concierge. Um, <laughs> Anyway, they've got a feature now where once, basically once you add a second item to any order, you can split it with someone else. Hmm. And so there can be one total bill, and then but then on the DoorDash side, they handle it. They handle splitting it, so you just mark this as this person's. And so you can do a group order mm -hmm. yeah. and then just split it all up and not have to do 14 different DoorDash. And orders. then we all get to like leverage your platinum status. Exactly. And you get to leverage our purchasing power. Exactly, and I get, more, I get more pointsies. Mm -hmm. That's why, why Lofty does all its purchasing on Amex cards. It's, it's Daddy gets the point. It's true. It works. There's got to be some perks. <laughs> yeah. But I wonder how far we are away from that happening in restaurants where, you know, let's say they've got yeah, the, the square, clover. Yeah, or, the square, or clover, square. whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. where well, they like, just on the device at the table, they're like, oh, yeah, you had this. <laughs> you guys look like a pain in the ass. We've already split it for you. Yes. Thumbs out. Uh, we yes. can do that at... at uh, our favorite birthday spot, Red Robin. Yeah. I'm pretty sure on there you oh, can yeah. split the check yeah. by yeah. item right there, yeah. or you can do even amount splits oh. just on the POS. <clears throat> we did that on yeah. ours. Like, we actually did that actually because you had your dumb code. That's right. A free burger is never dumb, sir. <laughs> We're Never. on the we're on the way to Red Robin, and I am like, oh, you know, we'll all go over there together. And I'm like, so do you like Red Robin? Like, how often do you go to Red Robin? And Tyrell's like, oh, about once a year. About once I'm a like, year. Like, what? He's like, I get a free burger on my birthday. birthday dude. Yeah. Hey, I love. I really I enjoy Starbucks once a year. <laughs> Same deal. Yeah, it's too good. It's I enjoy too good, it, guys. <clears throat> Just don't enjoy it enough to go there without a free burger. I I, do, I won't fight you on that one, but um, so this next one is I am important. Okay. It is an app that makes fake calendar events and contacts and adds them to your phone so you seem busier. <laughs> and it will text you and give you event notifications. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's great, yeah. We can get that for Tyrell. He can skip being an influencer. <laughs> we, just go, we go straight to the, the notifications. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, would Lofty build that app? No. No, Lofty wouldn't build that? Would, would Lofty's founder use that app? <laughs> Might. There was... There was, and maybe still is, those, like, fake girlfriend, fake boyfriend apps where they'll, like, call you and text you and, like, do a voice call with you in front of your mom to prove you're seeing somebody. And, like, I remember when, you know, many moons ago, like, I know people who did that. Mm -hmm. Like, people who've got the hovering mom or the hovering parents. The helicopter parents. Yeah. They're like, see, like, his name's Tyler. Goes to a different school. You he loves him. me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Lofty would not build that app. 
No, but not for I, us. No. I do think that there is some interesting engineering challenge in there to orchestrate all these notifications and such and make it legitimate looking. Oh, yeah, a whole lot of Twilio integration. A whole lot of background processing. The, the funny thing about that is, is that like as you wait, know, so was there a person on the other end or like a Markov chain of bad Tinder? See, the thing is, is that it threads. was a person. Mm. But so this I is actually, a virtual assistant service. Yes, I actually think there's a case to be made for that being a really fun use of AI and machine learning for natural language processing. That's about the like most practical thing that we figured out to actually do with neural networks. That and face swaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you hear the last Creative Cloud update has a deep fake tool built in. Oh, you just like you can face map in <laughs> Adobe Creative Cloud. Content now. aware deep fake is yes. now an option. And yes, it's just option. one of the boxes you can check. Well, it will, love it. Boop. Love it. And the, apparently the engineers have been working on it. You like, can make Ryan Reynolds say anything in Photoshop now. <laughs> it's just a Ryan Reynolds. I love you so much. <laughs> can you put shirts on Ryan Reynolds, though? Because that's, uh, that's what, what I need. He does that usually well, you himself. Can do that with, no, that, you can do that shirt with Photoshop off, 7. Shirt off in Photoshop every movie. Photoshop 7. Yeah. Shirt off in every movie. Yeah. I remember. You can do the clon stamp shirt tool. <laughs> it was, uh, he just clon stamps some plaid. I love it. We established the over under on how long in to uh, the last. I think it was the last Ryan Reynolds movie I saw in theaters. We put out an over under as to how long it take for him to take his shirt off. Ninety seconds. We were real loud about it, and the woman behind us got real mad and cussed mm. us for talking during oh, the previews. God. And then in the credits, his shirt comes off, and she's behind us and just goes, "Damn it!" No, oh, they were right. Oh, they got me. <laughs> I was so vindicated. So vindicated. Next one. Send me to heaven. This app records how high you throw your phone and then places you on a global leaderboard for the highest throws. Too gameable. Okay, how? Well, because like... Like slingshots? Yeah. Or like people like take them in helicopters. Or get, get on a plane? I mean, how many people it's have like... Win? I guess Strava's done a lot of work to try and scrub KOMs from people that just ride up the hill in their car and pretend like they were biking right. five miles an hour. I feel like, I mean, you know, you guys are the experts here, but I feel like there's some, like, velocity indicator that can be like, yeah. the human arm cannot send a phone this fast. Yeah, there's a threshold somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where like, it is. But see, it's a, it's not a line, it's a curve. Yeah, for right? sure. And people will find and exploit that curve. Um, also, there's, there, I'm trying to spin this into a real app. Sure. I... I'm I just don't struggling. understand, like, are there that many people that are willing to eat their phone just to be on a leaderboard? Well, i got to be honest, my man, I think we know the answer. You know, okay, wait. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Okay, hit me with it. Um, here's the pitch, okay. if you're listening. Otterbox, right? Oh, yeah, just right oh the whole yes. Marketing campaign. I love right? it. Get you, that. Download, you buy the Otterbox, put it in there, you fucking eat your phone yes. off the side of Everest. Yes. And get on the leaderboard. Yes. Oh, man. Thousand there percent. Or life proof. Yep. Life proof. We Take that, that SD card out of the camera, yes. slap that in an envelope, mail it to ourselves with a postmark date on it. We've got a poor man's copyright. Copyright. That's right. Let's do it. I'm excited. Take that out Guys, well, this is, we should have just made this an ideation. And, if, yeah, yeah. and if they wanted to do is that. Is it not? We would, Wait, build, it was. we would build that app. That's fine. Is fun. it solving a practical business purpose? Yes, in the form of like driving sales and things like that. Mm -hmm. I would take that one. And there's definitely nothing. There's like not it on a data science. Well, there might be a data science component to that. Actually, if you want to be able to combat, combat the people taking them up in helicopters and stuff, it, it'd be a fun. It'd be a fun physics project, if nothing else, mm -hmm. just to just to find where that was. And there is it out. no like production staff on our team that would say no to working. With oh no, everyone would be everyone would be jazzed about that. They would. They would like. They yeah. would be checking the calendar to see yes. if it was April Fool's Day. Yeah, that's, can... that's passion project territory mm -hmm. real fast. Yep. Yep. Oh, you mean the whole purpose is that you see how high you can throw your phone? Yeah, done. I'm in. I just got hired by this company to be a QA engineer. They just want me to go stand on the roof and throw phones in the middle of College Avenue every day. <laughs> you got to... Yep. Yo, no, I still get paid. <laughs> yeah, My totally, check's still clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to account for the up and the down. Just the it's, down, it's that's both. how you know you're cheating. Yep. You just threw it off the. Top. Yeah, you just that's threw, how you know you, you threw it off the top deck of Top Golf. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Launch it in a rocket. <laughs> Next one, guys. Electric razor simulator. It buzzes <laughs> and makes the noise. <laughs> and it the looks same? like an electric razor. <laughs> Do you guys remember the app? when app stores this, first came out? Yes. Like the like the little gun simulators oh, yeah. where you like change the gun and yes. stuff. Fart there was noise. like a whole class. <laughs> so many fart noises. Yeah. Oh, so many. In the iPhone yeah. app store. So many. Just all the fart noises. <laughs> no, I've I've seen this app used somewhere. Oh, no. oh this is real? Because the way yes. This or some version of this yeah. is real. Because you 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 run it by somebody and make them think that you've just shaved oh, your head. Yeah, 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 okay. And you just eat a light of friendship on fire. Yeah, yeah uh, that's tough. Yeah. This is another one where I look at it and I go, how do we make, how is this an actual real product? Is Gillette 
Yeah, somebody. You know, marketing, somebody. marketing, what, and what maybe. Would, would we build that one? I don't think so. What would be the benefit marketing wise of just like, hey, well, that's we have a product. The, that's why I say we wouldn't do it. It'd be one of those on ones like we built an app to say we built an app. I mean, we've seen a lot of marketing products out there like yeah. that. They're just literally a gag, mm-hmm. yeah. basically. Um, to hopefully drive a few sales. That's yeah. You you. On, I don't see the ROI on that one. On the offside, they'd have to find some way to incentivize and gamify the experience, or you'd never open it more than once. Even if they got you to download it, like yeah. you know, free iPad once a month for anybody who's out, you know, like a raffle, right? Like some way to to force signups. No one would open that app a second time. No. no. And that's that's a problem with fun stuff like that. You gotta get a positive ID on them when they do the one shave. Yeah, you got to. Record their data. You got to. That light. Make them log in with that every LiDAR scanner. Make them log in with every one of their social accounts. Yeah. Not Obviously. just one, every right. single one. <laughs> Please log in with your LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> and Google. Foursquare. Uh, Ooh. Flickr. Boy. Foursquare. Was, did Foursquare off? Could you log into other apps of Foursquare? I think you could. Only location based remember. apps. But. I feel like there was some kind of. I feel like there was some push pull of their data out because I uh, maybe I'm wrong. I, Do we need to pull one out for Foursquare? Are they gone? I think they're like in the, like the holding cell with Groupon. Like they still technically exist, but like maybe no one works there anymore. It's like it's like a like a maximum security prison. <laughs> it was, but like there's a dark cell in the corner yes. with just like this booming voice, and that's Yahoo. Yes. Like, every once in a while, Yahoo just like imparts some wisdoms, like. Y'all, young bloods don't know shit about being in here. I'm the, I'm I've the, been in here for 25 years. I'm the third highest traffic <laughs> site on the internet, and I still can't monetize. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we paid our entire everything on the one thing that like uh, Microsoft. Got. We were the whole, we were the start page for every web browser for fifth for infinity. It was full on antitrust. And if you're like <laughs> over a certain age, it's still Yahoo. Yeah. It's still freaking Yahoo. Half of or all MSN. AOL browsers yes. booted to Yahoo. <laughs> yes, it's breathtaking. <laughs> now, maybe my favorite one on the list, guys, Ghost Radar. I want it. Okay. Maybe it's just the influence of October on me. Yeah, it's, but it's but spooky season. It's a good thing. You know, this is like a, there's like a promo side of this as well. You could promote some business yeah. with it. Here's why I like it, because there's a hardware component to that one. I'm imagining. Because you got to have it. Could be. You gotta have the, the the Ghostbusters, you know. You gotta have the electromagnetic spectrum monitoring that you mm-hmm. put into it. We do like integrating software with hardware components. Sure, lofty. That would be fun. I could do that. Like okay. Bluetooth. It had the Bluetooth. We talking Bluetooth? We talking a, a dongle? Well, I think I think there's a you, you know can't, you can't plug it into the headphone mm-hmm. jack anymore. There's a freemium well, out for that. There's a freemium yeah. model. Lightning, mm-hmm. a lightning cable. There's a freemium model where there's no hardware. It's just the app. On your phone and you're, you know, pointing and walking around. Then, for but if you're if you're a pro user, that's right. right. Yeah. For their platinum mm-hmm. pre- pre- premier they, pro did, plus they, did they send you the 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 uh, well, it, at the nine ninety nine a month? At the nine ninety nine a month, no, you just get access to more features in the app. But at forty nine uh, ninety nine a month, you get the full you get hardware, hardware. plugs yeah. in or Bluetooth. So at like nine ninety nine, it'll integrate with your social, so you can post your ghost yeah, videos straight exactly. to social. Yeah, you can go straight to TikTok with your ghost videos. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. Ghost radar. Um, ghost that's one of those on ones. TikTok? I don't know. Probably this time of year. Yeah. What? Ghost videos on TikTok. There's a lot of those. Uh, it's Halloween. Got it. It's so spooky. I think there's. You got to get this video out by Sunday to, in order to. Make oh, it's it. yeah. Otherwise, all the references. <laughs> oh shit! <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, yeah, Dis- yeah, disclaimer. Yeah. Disclaimer. <laughs> I feel like Ghost Radar is one that's like everyone to make fun of, but there's some dude who makes like five hundred thousand dollars a year on a fake ghost hunting app, oh, yeah. like for sure. Yeah, for sure, somebody somewhere out there is doing that. I mean, yeah. I'm definitely changing my Twitter handle to Ghost Radar now. Ghost, I get that. So, I get that. Just on the name, Ghost Radar just sounds like two characters from like a like a Navy SEAL SOCOM game. Ghost and Radar. Yeah, the Ghost and Radar are like a duo, or, or like in one of the Call of Duty franchises. That like sounds like a Tom Clancy novel. Actually. Yeah, that's Ghost that Radar. too. All it's Ghost Recon. Turns yeah. like there's there's one mastermind behind Thanks all for of clarifying. us. I'm yeah. here for you, bud. Uh, I can I can be a can't call it Ghost Recon. Sorry, that was the original name for the app. Ghost Recon yeah, was TM'd. yeah, was, yeah. that was TM'd. That was TM'd for yeah. sure. Um, <clears throat> next one is Hold On, which is, again, a leaderboard. So you pay for it, and then you see how long you can hold your finger on the screen without letting go. This is uh, there's a ranked leaderboard. This sounds yeah. like a Mr. Beast app. <laughs> for sure. 
You know, are you familiar with Mr. Beast, right? Mm-hmm. I, it's YouTuber, in my brain, but I can't. He's a YouTuber that uses up. all of the all of the money that he earns. He's like a top end YouTuber. Okay. He really, lots lots of lots of youth viewership. Mm. He uses all of the money and and basically is just snowballed into the more and more ridiculous challenges. So you know, gets his friends together, puts a million bucks in a big glass cube, and then does like a stuck on a truck style. Everyone puts a hand on it, and you know, last person to shit their pants gets a million dollars or whatever it is. <laughs> And so that's what I'm imagining this app is. The thing, you like... It's the Mr. Beast app. It's absolutely ridiculous, but the thing is, like, you know that, like, if this got in at a high school somewhere... Oh, gosh. And it was, like, you know, lunchroom shenanigans, like, there would be kids, like, getting, huh? like, you know, some horrible hand cramp disease it's, from no, doing it so much. No, there would be so kids much. getting it's, STEM degrees because they'd be, like, 3D printing apparatuses <laughs> to, like... It would be, like, escalating nuclear warfare. Someone would start it's with, happening. like, going in the lunchroom and, like... Figuring out that they can, like, put a hot dog on their phone with a, with a weight on top of it. Like a hot dog with one of those concrete yes, generals. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, nope, nope. And, uh, and literally then they, every yeah. food item will be tied yeah. for... for no, nope. uh, green bean. Green bean was no. Yeah. And, Not and, uh, conductive and, enough. And like a like a 20 kilowatt hour power bank. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, every single kid's power bank is just, like, forked Daisy and paper chain. clipped into this. <laughs> Doing hot swaps. Yes. You know? yes. Oh god, this is perfect. Uh, I thought there were real apps in here. There are those are okay, real apps. Okay. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. I outed one of them. I didn't mean to. Huh? That's okay. That's okay. I'll, I'll forgive you. It. I've seen it on oh, the man. YouTube. Okay, this is one. This is a real one that got made. Um, app. Well, it was on Android. App that intercepts all Facebook and Instagram messages after a certain time of day on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. So it's like a do not disturb. Is that what it's I'm a saying? it's drunk goggles? Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Oh, it keeps you from posting. Keeps you from posting. I see. I remember. I, that's. I remember that's sitting impressive. around. I remember sitting around speculating with someone about like a breathalyzer driven like phone lock. Might have been in my younger days. Mm-hmm. I might have been thinking of something I needed. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Yeah, but I, it, it was it's way back there. I'm going deep in the yeah. in the glacier Recesses. storage. See, yeah, I, I can't imagine the sea of permissions you would have to go through to grant all the access to all your socials. Like most app ideas, it was founded on like, wouldn't it be cool if like right. what's his name's cousin? Um, yeah, <laughs> Tom Segura's <laughs> cousin. But uh, as to whether or not the app could it. do it, <laughs> you oh. could never do it on iOS on Android. It's possible. You would have you would have to get some aggressive permissioning, though. Yeah. yeah. But if you're like the type of person that wants to inhibit your own behavior, you're motivated enough to do things. So you'll root your phone if it's a big enough problem. Yeah. At 11 p.m., you'd be like, you I'm, wanna... "I'm texting Tara. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Reconsider some things in life beyond." Rooting your phone, should you find your? I did. It's true. I, it's true. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you. Now, the funny thing is, though, is that people I would need say, to like reevaluate their driving habits, but they also need seatbelts. Yes, both. Things. You got both. No, Here's no. the thing I will say is, is that so we've. I don't know about you guys, but I remember the first time I bumped into Slack, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like the world is fixed. Like the problems we had are over mm-hmm. because synchronous and asynchronous communication are really hard. Yep. Being able to create one medium for synchronous and asynchronous communication is really difficult. And Slack felt like it threaded the needle perfectly. Now, it's had its own sea of monsters that have sprung up that we've had to whack them all down just like everybody else. But for, you know, for our business at least, we don't email very much. No. Unless they're external or we need to transfer files to someone externally, we, we've, we have a solution. Yeah. And, you know, again, it has its own ills. But one of the things that I think is really interesting is time-gated communication. Mm-hmm. where you have an idea at 9 p.m. and I want to share it with one of you or both of you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. And I actually think having... So, so Slack enables you, enables you to communicate synchronously, so at the same time you're both... Or asynchronously, I can leave a message, you can come back and get it. Yep. And you haven't lost context on the thread. Because right. that's what happened in emails, right? Somebody was replying, somebody was replying all, somebody was replying all the four messages back, and you just lo- lacked the correct context to be able to do anything. Right. But one of the things that I think is really neat is, is that you know, Slack's got it in a lot of places, got it in now, where you can type out the message, and instead of hitting send, you can hit send at. 
Yep. And I think that's actually really neat. Yeah. I use I use scheduled sends. Yep. I used a plugin for Gmail for a long time, and now it's right. built right into Gmail. Yeah. Because like it's I will, so useful. I'll get super motivated to do like prospecting and sales work, or like reach out to a customer, and I'll be thinking about it at midnight. Yes. And I'm, like, I'm not blowing up a customer at midnight. Yeah. But this thing will come out crisp at seven fifteen, and yes. it's going to look like I'm the most productive mf in the world. Yes. Yeah. They're not going to be like, he sent me an email from bed. They're like, this dude's already been to the gym. Yeah. yeah he's That's what happens when people email at 7.15. Yes. Yeah. Not true. Still in bed. <laughs> not true. Definitely still asleep. If you're I watching, I was still sleeping. 100%. <laughs> but I find it really useful because I, I have, you know, the similar sickness of kids are in bed, you know, there's nothing I feel like watching. I'm just going to go sit back down at my desk. Yeah. And I'm not even going to be mad about it. Like, I, I'm wanting to do this to get this done, or I had a great idea. It was, you know, the best time I could write that day, you know, whatever it was. And I don't need to be bothering everyone at 10 p.m. Mm. Yeah. Even if their little dot is green in Slack, I don't need to be bothering them. Right. And so having that is another, and you talked about Google's just baked it in now. Slack's yeah. just baked it in now. And that is one thing that, you know, it's it's the kernel of this idea is, is that, you know, communicate at different times, time gated. And I do think that is actually very interesting. Yeah. So here's a real app that came in. It's not on that list because it's not on my list of worst apps that I've ever heard. Um, this is one that we talked to a potential client about. You might remember this one, Tyrell. Uh, it's in that vein. It's inhibiting the user of the device's behavior. Yeah. Um, and this was in the space of uh, a tool for helping people that sort of self-identified that there's a certain type of content on the internet, maybe the kind you open up, in a, in a darker browser tab, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. um, that they got too much of, mm -hmm. and they wanted to be able to hold themselves accountable. Um, and so we looked into this, and this was an app that ended up not getting built, but it fell apart mostly based on the capabilities of the device. Right. The permission yeah. level stuff of how do I block someone from using a core app of the device yep. that they should be able to, like... I need to introspect their web behavior, yeah. mm -hmm. inject logic in there. It was just too complicated. We looked at it on the Android side. But that was one of the things we came up with was like, well, who's going to root their phone? And uh, the person that was working with this app was like, the clients that I'm working with will absolutely root their phone. 100% would have. They're coming to me and paying me money to help them with a problem. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They're motivated to do so. And so those sort of things like potentially work. I was like, well, we can't do it for iOS. There's just no way. He's yeah. like, great. They'll buy an Android phone. Yeah. I was like, oh. So when you think about it that way and you think about tools that don't have to be ubiquitous, mm -hmm. right? That people will physically go out and buy different hardware to solve a specific problem, kind of open some doors. It just reminded me of that. That was not a bad app idea by any stretch, uh, the one that I'm referring yeah. to. You know, but similar in vain. Mm -hmm. And there's I think there's it's funny because, you know, Apple has been so insistent that you're not able to do those kinds of things. But then as the pendulum has swung back around to parental safety controls, you can do a lot of that stuff. Now. Oh, yeah. You mm -hmm. can do so much of that now, at the, even at the time-based level. I can time gate when they can get on an app, the cumulative amount of time they can spend on an app per day, <clears throat> what network they have to be on to access a certain app. It, it's, it's really, I don't want to say exciting, but it's very interesting what they've been able to do to get parental controls for youth access devices. If you're going to play the zombie plant game, Mm -hmm. And I want you to run in the streets. You do it at home. Yeah, that's right. You, you have, have to, to do be it on the home. You have to be on home Wi-Fi to play. I'm gonna do that. You PBC. do that here. Yeah, that's right. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe well the, enough to call it PVZ. Maybe PVZ is, maybe the first elite is, iPad game. To be honest, that game on iPad, it was a legit. It was a positive experience. Can confirm. <clears throat> so next one, selling public parking spaces. Out from under the public. I, you know, my guess would be renting public parking spaces. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. We do that one. Yeah. We we do the mess out of that one. The uh, it, I've offered that to our future landlord. It's funny because that actually is real close into our core competencies, right? Yeah. You got a lot of location. You got a lot of data mapping. Yep. You've got you've got asynchronous communication, background processing. And how many times? And so this is a I, I think parking. If you'll allow me to MBA all over this. Parking is a really unique problem because it's a supply and demand issue, but it's not supply constrained. So there's always parking, you just can't find it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I think is interesting can't, about can't this can't find problem. it or it's artificially constrained. This is my parking spot. It's not being used. It's an empty parking spot, but you may not park here. Well, I even think about like the way IKEA parking lots are designed. There's always parking spaces. You just don't know where they are till you get to them because mm -hmm. you can't see them because of the way they build their lots, and that's on purpose. 
Um, but there's a lot of instances like that where there is parking on that deck, but you see people coming out and you can't see any of the open areas, you're going to skip it and go to the next deck. So what do you think of the parking deck at X and A that they put in? Because they put lights on it. Our parking deck has yeah. lights. You can see from outside as you're driving right, by, a sea of red lights. It, when a car pulls in, it uses like a photo sensor, yeah. probably. Mm -hmm. Some sort of proximity sensor to change toggle the color. It's a really good... Even for the whole lane, I think. Isn't there like a... Yeah, and you, lane, yeah. Does you've got, you've got lane level space. marks. So as you're looking down yeah. the parking lane, you can see it. It's you a really good solution. Outside. It's yeah. a... And like, you know, if... In an individual level, it's a small annoyance, but like when you think about traffic patterns in major metropolitan areas, traffic is a like actual problem yeah. mm -hmm. for how cities move and live and breathe. A lot and, of money gets spent purely on studying. Yes, and, and, yeah. and so if you could build an app that had some premium spaces and then a bunch of free spaces, and the thing is, you'd have to get to scale, right? Like you'd have to have enough people using the app to be able to get the information, to get the data in, or you'd have to have some other modeling or mapping or some system that communicated that information back but like that could actually help like it could actually make a really big difference lofty would build the mess out of that app yeah like, for sure that's like right up our alley i think that we would be more likely to build it for an asset owner yeah right someone that that has like like for example if a major retailer said yeah. we want to start selling spots in our lots and roll that out that's kind of the fit for us if it were like the uh you know, more of a direct to consumer, like the Uber, the Airbnb of parking. Love it. <laughs> Love Airbnb it. for cars. Um, you know, th there's just such a marketing piece behind that. It would just depend if 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 our client had the rest of that and knew how they were going to go to market with it. Um, then yeah, that's totally the technology is all the same. Um, but you know, honestly, I think for something like that, if you were wanting to go out and we're like. You and I could rent out parking spaces, at assets that we own, or our homes, or whatever. Um, you know, that's a little bit beside what we typically work with, but you know, still a it's still a very good app for for our skill set. I would say. Yeah, I'd, I'd be, be interested. That'd be a fun one. I, I, I think I think we'd really really come on to that. I think we'd enjoy it. And you know, good business case for it. And could,